The epic push for women's suffrage. We love to see women coming together, no matter what color, cream. Oh, sorry, what? White supremacy? Damn it, I should have known. I should have known. The 15th Amendment, part of Reconstruction Era legislation, gave newly emancipated Black men the legal right to vote. Emphasis on legal because in practice, not so much. This set off years of serious discord and laid bare the, how do I put this, lack of inclusivity within the mainstream white-led women's suffrage movement. I will cut off this right arm of mine before I ever work or demand the ballot for the Negro and not the woman. Damn. Susan has some feelings. White women's suffrage, they're trying to ensure their seat at the table with white men. They're thinking that seat is going to be taken by black men if they don't push them out of the chair. They began consolidating around shared whiteness with their male compatriots and consolidating with Southerners in order to ensure those numbers. The pitch was basically, give all women the vote and the white majority will rise significantly. The Negro and foreign born women will be disenfranchised in most Southern states anyway. Black women still are pushing voting and citizenship rights and women's rights. You find the formation of black feminism. That fight never stops. Powerful Black women suffragists like Ida B. Wells, Mary Church Terrell, and Fanny Barrier Williams personified the motto of the National Association of Colored Women, lifting as we climb. They worked as best they could within the broader women's suffrage movement, but also formed their own more intersectional orgs to address Black women's concerns and Black community issues in general. I think it's very important that we talk about the Black women suffragists at the time who were very integral in making sure that the 19th Amendment was passed, which was in 1920, even though they were not counted as women at that time. This was a historic moment, but let's not forget that many states, especially those under Jim Crow laws in the South, introduced racist poll taxes, grandfather clauses, literacy tests, and much more, which effectively denied people of color, particularly Black folks, the right to vote. And did I mention the white vigilanteism? These women were working on behalf of a piece of legislation that they knew at the time they would not benefit from. Still, they saw it as an incremental change. Sometimes change doesn't always happen all at once. After decades of blood, sweat, and tears, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed, thanks in no small part to Black women's leadership. This gave federal oversight of those states that were most notorious for voter disenfranchisement and got rid of many barriers built to suppress the vote. Fast forward over 50 years later and key parts of the Voting Rights Act have been stripped away. To this day, Black women and Black folks in general face widespread voter suppression in the form of disinformation, criminal status, voter ID laws, and more. People have been trying to suppress the votes of people of color, of Black folks, of young folks. They've been doing this since our insurgents as a country. Black women organizing for voting rights has never stopped. For people who are trying to maintain white supremacy and male supremacy, that's a threat. It's essential to know our history in order to make sense of the fight for our future. Just like the trailblazing women before us, we continue to build an intersectional movement that won't stop until we guarantee the right to vote for all. Like, for real.